jail as some of the sentences are suspended and they've agreed plea bargains. 32 people died when the ship ran aground on rocks off the coast of Italy last year. The captain who's accused of fleeing the ship will be tried separately. Peter Rone is a an American lawyer representing eight of the survivors and one of the victims of the disaster. Hello, Peter. Hi, Steve. Thank you for having me. It's nice to talk to you. Th- these men who were convicted today, what, what do you make of the sentences? Well, it's uh, it, it's sort of a farce, the entire trial. Um, what got me is that Carnival, the corporation behind all of this, was charged with manslaughter as well. But uh, they were able to be uh, pretty much uh, let off the hook because they paid 1.1 million euros. Uh, to me, they're just as guilty as everyone else, um, and they got no punishment. And remember, this is a multi-billion dollar corporation, so that 1.1 uh, million euros is, is equivalent to uh, a traffic ticket for you and me. You, you're representing several of the survivors. What do they want to see out of this? Well, they they also, you know, it, it's funny, they, they, they feel that Chitino, uh was... Uh, grossly negligent, but again, Carnival Corporation knew uh, Tino was before, long before the accident happened. The crime actually uh, was committed long before this accident ever happened. Chitino has had plenty of problems before and has never been disciplined or anything. Uh, you have to remember, the impact was a minor impact in very shallow waters. The truth of the matter is, is that it took them six hours to get off that ship. They were just standing still, doing nothing, because they were untrained workers and uh, employees of, of Carnival. They were never trained on how to evacuate, as you would in an airplane with a stewardess. So the real culprit here is really Carnival. Um, well, and, and that's who we hold responsible. Tim Barlow from Doncaster was actually a dancer on the Costa Concordia. Hello, Gemma. If you go back to that, that night, January 2012, when did you first become aware something was wrong? Um, well, I was actually um, in a performance dancing um, on the stage, um, and then obviously we, we felt a big bang and, and a, a tilt and everything, all the, the scenery and everything was falling over, costumes, and we realised something, was, uh, something wasn't right. <laughs> And had you had any training or documentation as to what to do in an emergency? Yeah, of course. I, um, I mean, the, the thing is, what we get trained in is uh, we do every, like, we have to do, like, um, boat drills. And it's the training, and we do a lot of training on board while we're there. But no one's ever been trained in how to cope with a tilting ship to lower the life raft. We've never actually experienced that. Obviously, when we do the boat drills, we're stood still. And the lifeboats can easily go up and down. Um, so obviously, I mean, on a tilt, I mean, we, no one's been, no one, I don't think anyone has had that experience to help how and what would you do if you can't use all the lifeboats. Um, I do think that we did do the best that we could do. And um, I know now they're doing even more training now. You have to do a lot more training before you even get on board now. So they have made a big, uh, a big uh, change to that. And so the... The training that you had had, was it any use to you on that night? Well, of course it was. I mean, it was, you know, it's your basic training, you know, like, you know, we all knew how to do the certain things and the role that we had to do. Um, It did help, obviously, in that circumstance, you know, like people react in different ways. It's very different. And also with a lot of passengers, you know, they were very frightened as well as we were. And we were trying to keep them calm as well. It was obviously a very, like, different atmosphere. Um, I do think we, we did do the best we could. Um, I think, like, you know, hopefully now, I mean, there, there needs to be, like, like they are doing now, there's, there's a lot more, um, even more training before you get on board now. Um, we did do, like, what we were told to do, even beyond, beyond some of the things that I did I wasn't supposed to do. But, you know, in the end, you just got to do whatever you can to help. How difficult was it getting people off that ship? It was very difficult. Obviously, I mean, I was on the, the deck three where it was um, nearer the sea, um, and that's where we were getting all the lo- lifeboats down more because obviously the other side was too high by the end. Um, and so we were getting all the passengers to come down to our deck level and trying to get them on that way, and uh, we were on such a tilt that we had to do like a human chain and hang onto the rail to like hold the passengers along. 
Um, so it was very difficult and very tough, especially obviously for those that were more elderly or with children. Um, but we did really did like the best that we could have done on the night. Have you been back onto a cruise ship again? Yeah, I did go back afterwards. Um, it took a while. I did go back. Um, I did another contract. I, I, um, I'm, glad I, I'm really glad I went back again. Um, I think it's a good way to get over, get over those fears and try and get back, get back yourself back to normal. Um, I, I went, I'm not um, on at the moment, but I, I wouldn't say no to another contract. I think uh, I really did do enjoy working for, like, Costa. So, you know, I would, I would go back again. I wouldn't be afraid. Accidents can happen. Peter, you're an American lawyer representing eight of the survivors. Captain Shatino will be tried separately. What is he accused of? Well, Steve, I, I, by the way, hello, Jenna. I, I represent hello. some of the dancers. You, may, you might know them. I just wanted to respond to something Jenna said. Jenna had the uh, luxury of speaking English. Many of the uh, dancers, housekeepers, and whatnot spoke no English, but they were able to pass the test, the safety exams, because they were given the answers to those exams so that the ship could take off. So you have a situation where you have employees who neither speak English or uh, Italian and can tell anyone what to do or, or what not to do. What do you mean they were given the answers? They, they were shown the answers before seeing the questions, were they? Exactly, exactly. They were given the answers to the exam. They couldn't even read English, yet they aced, aced those exams. The reason they were given the answers is so that they could fit with guidelines so they could take off with the ship. It's all about money. It's all about money, and... Um, that's who I feel the true culprit is. And even if Jenna was trained as well as she could have been, it's not to the level of a stewardess like in an airplane who goes through schooling and stuff. We just had an accident in San Francisco with a very little uh, loss of life. Why? Because the stewardesses were able to get everyone off. People yeah. were trying to get back on the plane to get their iPads, but the stewardesses wouldn't let them. They knew how to get people off. They were well trained. I was they broadcasting that night. Those, those shoots on that plane in San Francisco, they, they were down within minutes, weren't they? within seconds, actually. That's right. And and here, it, we are sitting like, I have video of people just sitting and standing there, like Jenna, who did the best she could with the training she had. She was trained to stand still and get people together for six hours. Get off yeah. the damn ship. Simple. Peter, thank you. I know, it was a long time. <laughs> Gemma, thank you, you very much indeed. Thank you very much. No Half problem, past ten. Thank you. Let's get the latest news now from the BBC. On digital